everyone, my name is Jenny Heyman and I'm the new Chair of Teaching and Learning here at Cambrian College. One of my areas of expertise is open educational resources at a global research level. So open educational resources are educational resources, digital or otherwise, that are licensed specifically in the public domain or with an open license so that people can download, adapt, and use the resources as part of education. The kinds of resources that we see in open educational resources are full textbooks, full online courses, worksheets, activities, images, audio and video, just as some examples. So anything that you might use as part of a coursework or as part of your classroom are open educational resources. So a little bit about the history of open educational resources. Around the turn of the century, with the, the rise of the internet and the availability of digital resources for people to use just to teach themselves, the United Nations got involved with their UNESCO organization. And they partnered globally with many, many nations around the creation and use of open educational resources. Some of the great hotspots for that, for example, are the European Union, where public post-secondary education is very no cost or low cost, and they were looking to create resources to support that. Um, globally, India, China, uh, the nations of Africa are creating and using open educational resources born more of necessity than other places. Here in North America, we have more of a standard of student purchased publisher resources as part of post-secondary education. So the growth of open educational resource use has been a little bit slow. Um, the United, in the United States, for example, um, Creative Commons has created this series of open licenses that we can now use. Colleges and universities uh, and organizations such as OpenStax are now creating open textbooks that are publicly funded and then openly shared. Here in Canada, groups like BC Campus, Alberta OER, Campus Manitoba, and now eCampus Ontario are creating and sharing Canadian-based open educational resources. So awareness is growing, which is really exciting. So some of the benefits of using open educational resources uh, are lower student costs, overall costs for education. If we can save them money on textbooks by using OER, that's a real benefit for them. The creation of open educational resources is often done with inclusive design or design for accessibility, which is a real benefit in terms of upholding AODA here in Ontario, for example. Um, one of the other benefits is multiple perspectives. So if you can use a variety of resources in a variety of formats, you're sharing with your students multiple perspectives. The final great purpose that I love for open educational resources is that students can use and create them as part of co-creation of knowledge. Some of the drawbacks of open educational resources, and there always are, uh, is first of all awareness. Awareness is not high that these um, resources are available for faculty members to use. So awareness is one of our key drivers in terms of what we're trying to do when we learn about OER. Uh, second drawback is actually finding them, knowing which repositories to look in, what open licensing actually means, uh, and understanding copyright in the context of your teaching. Finally, one of the drawbacks of using open educational resources is that they're not always available for all subjects. So for example, higher upper year courses, graduate level courses that are lagging a little bit behind in the creation of those resources. But for first year courses, for academic upgrading, there are a tremendous amount of these resources available. So I encourage you to check them out, try and find them, and seek help in the Hub and with our librarian Marnie Seal to see what you can learn. Hi, my name's Megan and I teach math and stats in the School of Business. This last semester I decided to incorporate an open textbook in my stats class. I decided to just put it in the course outline and give students the option to choose the publisher resource or the open textbook. Well, I attended Open Day last spring and it was uh, a bit of an eye-opener to see what was out there and what I could actually do by myself without having to rely on the publisher resources. It actually wasn't that difficult to find the resource. The search engines are getting much easier and Marnie in the library was very helpful and I found exactly what I needed and what I was able to tailor for myself. I 
I found that the students weren't using the book to its full potential anyway. And with the new students that we have, they will only buy the book if they're going to use 100% of it. And we aren't always doing that. We also found that the publisher resources were compromised, so the answers were being leaked. So I just found it a lot easier to find something that was free and accessible for everybody from day one to get students off on the right, on the right foot. Just do it. Just take the leap, put it in your course outline, and you can even involve the students and, and work with them to create something that's going to work for you. Hi, I'm Marnie Steele. I'm your faculty librarian. If you're interested in exploring open educational resources, it can be really overwhelming because there's a lot out there. I invite you to come visit me in the library or talk to a Hub team member so that we can support you through the whole process.